We're looking forward to hearing our brother this morning. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing verse 4 of that same song. It won't be very long. Verse 4. It won't be very long until earth shall pass away. Lord, it won't be very long till works of men decay. But Jesus has prepared a happy dwelling place for all who look above and trust is a matchless grace. Well, it won't be very long. Lord, it won't be very very long till Jesus shall appear. Uh, that day is drawing near. Oh, will you be ready then to meet the ransom throng and get ready for that day? It won't be very long. Well, it won't be very long. And it won't be very long. Oh, till Jesus shall appear. That day is drawing near. Will you be ready then to meet the ransom throng and get ready for that day? It won't be very long. Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, I, I, thank you for the introduction, um, Brother Wilkie. Yes, it is a pleasure to be here at the Church of Christ in Edgewood, Maryland. Now, this is my second time visiting this location and the first time in this building. And I'm just excited and I'm proud of the progress that y'all have made within three short years from meeting in a hotel to being prepared to change the community that y'all are in. You know, it's not just the building, but I had a chance to walk around and look at the plans you have to help the hungry, to help those in need, to raise our youth up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And I appreciate your efforts. Um, I'm coming from, um, like you said, the minister. <laughs> I was going to say intern. <laughs> I am the minister um, at the Church of Christ Northwest located in Pikesville, Maryland. We are a new plant and we're looking, to, um, we're excited because we came in with a challenge planting a new work and the coronavirus is just another challenge. But we know that you cannot grow without challenge. Right. They cannot be strength without resistance. In fact, there's no point in even being strong if there's nothing to resist and to move yeah. with strength. Yes, sir. Like All right. right. So um, today's um, core scripture or excerpt will be from the book of Luke, the book of Luke chapter 23. I'll be reading verses 32 to 34 to start. And I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. Okay. And the scripture read, there were also two others criminals led with him to be put to death and when they had come to the place called calvary there they crucified him and the criminals one on the right hand the other on the left then jesus said father forgive them for they do not know what they do and they divided his garments and cast lots sometimes and and, and this is what i want to talk about pain today I want to talk from the topic pain and opportunity. Sometimes we fail to become who God would have us to be because we fail sometimes to see the opportunity in the pain. Sometimes we fail to see the purpose of Jesus Christ in our painful moments. And sometimes when a situation seems very distressful, sometimes we lose sight of God in general. There's a quote from Tony Robbins I would like for y'all to consider today. It's not Bible, but it is true. Um, he said that the purpose of pain is to move us to action. It is not to make us suffer. Mm. The purpose of pain, and God created pain. God gave us pain as a gift to let us know what is good and what is evil. A simple example is this. If you were to lay your hand to the fire, and the pain you feel, is that pain there to torture you or is that pain to inspire you to remove your hand from that danger immediately? Then we see for certain that pain is not designed to torture us because God likes to see us suffer. Pain is in place by God to help us take positive action and do the things that are for our benefit and for our survival and for our abundance. It is easy to see this in physical pain, sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to navigate with such urgency during times of emotional and social and financial distress. 
right now. And we're going to discuss that today. So the question I have for y'all this morning is this, have pain caused you to pass over God's opportunities? Have pain caused you to pass over God's opportunities? Now, we have read in the scripture that Jesus was being led to an unrighteous death on the cross. Why? Because he had sinned, not, not sinned. He have not broken any laws, yet he was about to be executed with the worst criminals in the Roman Empire. And he was being led and crucified with two criminals, one on the right and one on the left. How did we get to this point? We got to this point because the Jews, and Jesus was a Jew for those who, who do not know. So his own people, the Jews, the religious elite, were envious of his influence, was envious of his followers, was envious because of the love and adoration he was getting because he was out there with the people, serving the people, helping the people with their needs. Whereas the religious elite, the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees, wanted to be served by the people. And they were envious, and then they put false charges on him and caused him to be unlawfully, unrighteously executed. Right. They pressured the governor at that time, Pontius Pilate, to say, execute him. Now, Pontius didn't want to execute Jesus, mm -hmm. but they pretty much said, if you don't, we riot. Right, right. And Pontius was like, if y'all riot, I'm in trouble because my job is to keep peace in this area. Right. That's right. Pontius Pilate flogged Jesus beyond recognition as was prophesied by the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 52 14. Please take note if you can. Isaiah said that he was flogged, he was beaten so bad that he didn't look like a man anymore. I want y'all to visualize that. He didn't even resemble a human being. And as Indeed, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren wombs that never bore, and breasts which never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do these things in the green wood, what will be done in the dry? There were also two others, criminals, let with him to be put to death. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, they had crucified him and the criminals, one on the right and the other to the left. Then Jesus said, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they divided his garments and cast lots. And the people stood looking on. But even the rulers with them sneered, saying, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Christ, the chosen of God. The soldiers also mocked him, coming and offering him sour wine and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And an inscription also was written over him in letters of Greek, Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews, the one of the criminals who were hung blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answered and rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing that you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we received the reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Yes, sir. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me. When you come into your kingdom and Jesus said to him, assuredly, I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. Amen. Jesus used his pain as an opportunity to help others in pain rather than feel sorry for himself. Beat beyond recognition walking to his execution spot. And this is important because it is natural that when you're going through a certain level of pain to sit down in self-pity and say, woe is me, Lord, why me? Why is this happening to me? What did I do wrong? And it's even easier to take the time, or should I say waste time, feeling sorry for yourself in your situation where you are surrounded by loved ones who's busy feeling sorry for you with you. 
They said the daughters of Jerusalem will follow after Jesus in tears. I know all the people who I know his mother had to have been hurt. His adopted father, Joseph, had to have been hurt. The apostles had to have been hurt. People are following after him, crying. On, but did Jesus use that to feed negativity? Did he do that to feed his depression? Did he do that to validate giving up? Did he do that to validate being lost? Absolutely not. He used that pain as an opportunity to comfort the daughters of Jerusalem, to look out for them. He said, do not feel sorry for me. All right. He said, worry about yourself because bad times are coming. Church, we're going through some hard times right now. But guess what, church? And if you don't know what I'm telling you, harder times are coming for everybody. What are we going to take this opportunity to do? Those who follow Jesus, are we looking ahead to what the future is happening? This is, when he said the green wood, he said if, it, if this bad stuff is happening during the good times, you know, like, like we say in Baltimore, people shooting each other at 12 o'clock in the noon. What they doing at 12 o'clock at night? You know, like if this is happening during the green wood, what's going to happen during the dry? Right now, there's just 30 million people unemployed. What are we going to do four months from now? If there's 60 million people unemployed, 60,000 people so far died of the coronavirus, what are we going to do when, if it becomes 120? How's the budget going to look like two months of lost income? How are we going to look like after six months? Right. Wow. See, the wor worst times are coming than this. Are we looking out for people in advance or are we going to sit there consistently react to our pain right now as opposed to Smoothing out the curve. Like our government that we like to criticize is intelligent enough to do. Well then, church, we ought to be smoothing out the curve. Because increased suicides are coming. Domestic violence is increasing. Education is decreasing. Poverty is rising. A depression is coming. And another awesome thing about our Lord Jesus Christ, check out his emotional toughness. Take, check out how, how, um, how um, bulletproof our Lord is, that he used his pain as an opportunity to relate to other people that's in pain. See, sometimes some people somewhere have it so good that they cannot relate to other folks. They cannot relate to people that's in poverty because they were born into a certain level of wealth. So they say, why are you whining about the fact that you are all, um, eating government cheese and, and everything like that and that you only make a minimum wage? Why don't you just pull yourself by your bootstraps and get to work? But if that individual have not come from rags or riches, they don't know how to function in rags. Right. Right. Do, the same people who say that are the same people who committed suicide when the stock market crashed in 2008 mm. because now they just have a million in the bank. Mm. That's somebody's good day. But for them, that was their worst day. God gives us bad moments, mm. people that die in our family, opportunities to be sick, ups and downs so that when we see our fellow man going through ups and downs instead of criticizing we empathize yes, God through the person of Jesus Christ put himself in a situation to feel pain so he can empathize with our shortcomings and our weaknesses and help us out in the time of trouble and Jesus is practicing this right now Jesus used this as an opportunity to forgive others, understanding that others can cause you pain, even on purpose, out of ignorance. I have to repeat that because this is hard to do. Jesus used this pain as an opportunity to forgive those causing them pain because he realized that people could cause you pain willingly out of ignorance. They had them up there on a cross. Some of them actually believe with their heart of hearts that he blasphemed the Lord God, Jehovah, Yahweh. People believed it in their heart, whether it was a lie or not. 
Some people believe that this was just some rogue Jew disturbing the peace of the Roman Empire. And they purposely made fun of him. They purposely humiliated him. They purposely spat on him, but they did it out of ignorance. Somebody is purposely hurting you because they're ignorant. Will we be like Jesus Christ and use it as an opportunity to forgive them for they know not what they do? Somebody saying, it's not by accident. That's why I said it the way I said it. And guess what? Forgive people who accidentally hurt you, too, and didn't know what they were doing. Forgive them, too. But I'm saying the people who want to see you suffer, who are laughing at your suffering, who's having a blast popping bottles, whatever you want to call it, because of your suffering. Forgive them for you, too, have hurt others. For you, too, have hurt the Lord purposely out of ignorance. Jesus used this as an opportunity to see paradise beyond the pain. While on the cross, how was he able to endure the pain? Because he was able to see the light at the end of the tunnel. See, sometimes you don't appreciate sunshine until you have 30 days of rain. And we dealt with that even last year, year before, almost every day in June, it was raining. We said, what happened to the summertime? But then Lord said, you think this is bad? Wait till 2020. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but we don't appreciate certain things until we are at a low position. Sometimes we don't appreciate breathing until you have a sinus infection. That's right, that's right, that's right. Then I didn't appreciate running water until I did missionary work in Africa. It changed my perspective. I heard running water. I got excited like a little kid during the Christmas holiday. You know, the painful moments cause you to appreciate the good that's coming. That's the only thing that's going to get you through. That's what got Jesus through. He told the man on the cross who said, remember me. He said in verse 43, I surely say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Let's take this as an opportunity to see the paradise past the pain and do the work now that's required to make it there. That's right. And now I know what some of y'all are probably saying. Somebody out there saying, well, of course Jesus was able to see the opportunity and the pain. He's Jesus. He's the son of God. And we're not the son of God. Great, because we're not going to talk about Jesus in this capacity anymore. We're going to talk about two criminals. We were talking about two criminals, and most people under the sound of my voice believe that they are better, at least morally and ethically, than criminals on, the, on death row. Come on, right, right. So then, all right, you can't outperform Jesus. Can you outperform two criminals? Come on, right. Sent to death. And there were two, one on the right, one on the left. One saw the same pain Jesus was going through, as an opportunity to find God. And the other one, in the same exact situation, saw an opportunity to blaspheme God. Second question, which one are you? Which one are you? When we're looking at the first criminal, the first criminal, he said to Jesus Christ, blaspheming him, if you are the Christ, then why don't you save yourself Uh and us? He was frustrated with his situation, and he was frustrated at Jesus because Jesus may be the Christ, yet is allowing all of them to suffer. Man, let's not judge this guy. Somebody is mad at God right now, saying, if you are God, if you are love, If you are good, why are you letting me suffer? Why are you allowing this to happen? Why did you take my father away? If you are the Lord, get rid of this virus right now. You have some hecklers right now staring at the church saying, where's your prayers going now? If prayers work, why don't you pray and let your God take it away? If he is the creator, if your faith is right, 
all these knuckleheads on Facebook thinking they hot stuff and they scared too. That's right. Come on, preacher. They say they're not a fan, so they use humor, trying to put people down to feel good about their low self-esteem. Right. Right. But you know what? I hope you're listening because here's some hope. Here's some hope. God knows what it's like to suffer, right. and he allowed it to happen right. Right. so he could be stronger. And we're weaker than God. And without resistance, there is no strength. Mm -hmm. It's time to toughen up. That's right. That's right. Not here to give you hope this morning. Every, uh, the, 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 the series um, that they had at East Baltimore did a really great job with that. I'm not here to give you hope this morning. I'm here to tell you to toughen up, man up, woman up, grow up. Yes, sir. Come on. Because weak right. people will not make it into the kingdom of God. And weak spirits cannot defeat the enemy. That's right. And if we were strong, then there'll be no need for us to go through any test. That's right. But we're being tested. So I guess we're not strong enough right now. That's right. Right. Let's take this as an opportunity. But let's talk about this criminal who decided to blaspheme the Lord because he's allowing them to suffer. He was poor minded. Poor minded people curse opportunity because they're in pain. A poor minded person says, I'm struggling financially. Can you give me five dollars? You offer them a job and then they blaspheme you for offering them the opportunity to work because they want something handed to them. That was the nature of the person that blasphemed the Christ. See, he was acting like the average person. A poor minded person in painful situations act like the average person in pain. The average person was saying, this is not the son of God. The average person was saying, if he if he is the son of God, save yourself. Matter of fact, if we had his powers, we probably our first mindset is let me prove that I'm the son of God by sending out fire, thunder and lightning, blood and vengeance. That's how we think. That's average thinking. But see, that's not the opportunity God wants us to take in these situations. He don't want right. hurt people to hurt people. Uh -oh. right. that's on, he don't want pain to lead to more pain. Mm -hmm. He wants pain to lead to positive actions that create peace. Right. Think about physical pain. The point of physical pain is not to throw yourself into a more harmful situation. Right. The purpose of pain is to put you into a what? Safe situation poor-minded people like the guy that blasphemed the Lord they only value others and as far as their willingness to pull them out their own mess mm, that's it. a lot of our pain is self-inflicted the way right. your, your bank account looked the way it does because of the way you handled your bank account that's right, right. I'm talking about individuals I'm talking about organizations on, you know any business um, and I'm, I'm not minimizing anybody's struggle we are in the same boat. We're going to talk about that, too. But it's been studied already. Most businesses who are suffering right now, most religious organizations that are suffering right now were suffering before Corona. That's right. They were just barely getting by. People who was living paycheck to paycheck was already living paycheck to paycheck. It could have been anything. It just so happened to be Corona. So we have to say to ourselves, how much pain did we inflict on ourselves? Because pain wasn't there for us to suffer and complain and do nothing. Pain is to move us into action. If you don't like the way your bank account is looking, why aren't you going into action to solve that problem? That's right. That's right. If your organization is struggling budget-wise, then where's the call to action? If people's homes is, is a place they don't want to be at, is a place of frustration. Well, you know, it was that way before you were stuck there. You just can't run away to an escape. That's right. That's right. There is no escape. There is no going to the harbor, eating at a restaurant, and forgetting that your home life is falling apart right now. That's right. Come on, See, a poor-minded person only values another person, only value God in as far as they are willing to pull them out of their mess. And since this criminal looked at Jesus and said he might have the potential to save because I heard of him. You know, he heard of him. He said, if you are the Christ, do you know what that means? That means this guy kind of believes. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. Isn't that weird? Because uh -oh. <laughs> guess what? If it was far from his mind that this is not possibly the Messiah, or I don't believe in that sort of thing, that wouldn't have been a conversation. Right. He, was, he was emotionally invested in blasphemy in Christ because he's like, I know you can save us, and you just sitting there. God! Come on, preach. Preach. Come on. 
if we decide to allow our pain as to become an excuse to curse God and die, mm. then you miss the purpose of pain. Mm -hmm. And that's why I talk about Jesus first, because he's been through it yeah. and he's on the other side. That's right. And that's why I'm sharing this right now. We don't want to be like that individual. We don't want to treat people in our family like right. that. We don't want to treat our friends like that. I have people um, on Facebook asking me for money. And the minute I tell them no, it's some profanities. Mm. And I block them. You have people that you do favors with all the time. Let's say you drive them to the store. And the minute you say no, uh -oh. or don't ask them for a favor, you find out how they really feel about you. Uh -oh. That's a poor-minded person. Use this as an opportunity to weed certain people out your life. Come on, Bri. But we're going to talk about a positive example, see? Because there was another criminal yes, sir. Mm -hmm. in the same situation. In the same boat. What do you do? And the first thing he did was he rebuked the blaspheming criminal. He used that as an opportunity to remind him that, you know what, do you not fear God? Come on, Where's your respect for God? Use this pain as an opportunity on, to fear and respect the Lord. I cannot tell you, and y'all can call it superstitious all you want. I cannot tell you how many times in the past I accidentally burnt myself with an arm and said to myself, well, I don't want to go to hell. <laughs> You know, I, I cannot tell you how many times that has happened. Take that pain and reflect right. on a fact that you don't want it anymore. That's right. Some people, and I don't know why this is happening, it doesn't matter. The why, Joe told me it doesn't matter why suffering happens. It's what you do with the suffering. Right. Oh, you're going to remain faithful during the suffering. It's, that's our job. That's the only thing we need to be concerned about is remaining faithful. But whatever the case is, sometimes God sends pain. Because they're doing wrong. Sometimes he's in pain because he wants them to be strong. But it doesn't matter. Pain is always for you to take the positive action towards it. And he told this blaspheming criminal that first and foremost, you don't blaspheme the Lord. You should respect the Lord. This is our opportunity to tell the blasphemers. I'm talking to the church. This is our opportunity to tell the blasphemers. To fear the Lord. That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. You better off being cocky when things are going well. You won't be cocky when things are going bad. What's wrong with you? Come on, bro. <laughs> What's wrong with you? And some people are turning to the Lord for the first time in a long time. Mm -hmm. This is the opportunity to save somebody. That's right. To save somebody who's turning around and trying to repent. He rebuked the blasphemer for not recognizing they're in the same boat. But see. Because the right-minded person understands that they're not the only person going through pain. That's right. That criminal is talking about me, 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 save me, get us off of here. And he's saying that we're all in the same boat. We all up here suffering. You blaspheming Jesus, he up here. Right. You up here, and I'm up here. We can't afford to look down at anybody right now. We are all suffering. This is the time to build partnerships. This is the time to build relationships. This right. is the time because we had nothing in common before. We have this. <laughs> we, have, we have this in common right now. He, the good criminal, rebuked the blasphemy criminal for not being accountable for his actions. By telling him, we are up here justly. We deserve to be up here. That's right. Come on, now, just think, whoever you are in the world watching this, just think about what type of stuff you have to do to warrant the death penalty. Mm. Now, this criminal was saying that you deserve the death penalty, I deserve the death penalty, but you don't only want acting like you don't deserve to be up here. Right. Uh -huh. And then he said the only one who don't deserve to be up here That's is right. Jesus. That's because he have done nothing wrong. Oh, See, a person who knows how to take opportunity and pain is a person who knows how to hold themselves accountable for their own decisions and for their own emotions and their own, resp and their own responses. Guess what, folks? You can't hold the president accountable for his decisions. Guess what, folks? You can't hold the governor accountable for their decisions. And if you think one vote's going to hold them accountable, I'm laughing at you. You can't hold God accountable for what he allows to happen. That's right. That's what the blasphemy criminal tried to do. See, some people say, that was crazy what you just said. We just read people trying to do it. 
You can't, you cannot change this. You cannot hold the coronavirus accountable and wish it away. You cannot change the adversity. The only thing you can change is your response to the adversity. And the only thing God holds you accountable or responsible for is your response. And part of that response is saying, this is what I am accountable for. This is what I can control. I cannot control anything else, but I know I'm in this situation and I'm going to move forward with faith in Jesus Christ. I'm going to move forward with that. I'm going to make the most out of a situation I can't change because if I do not make the most of this situation, I'm still going to go through the situation, but I'm not going to have paradise at the end of the situation. But if I'm going to go through the situation, I might as well get something from the situation. If I'm going to be stuck in the house all day, I might as well get something out of being stuck in the house all day. All those times you complain about how busy you are when now you're not busy. Do all that stuff you were too busy to do that you said you was going to do. Do it now. God helped you not be busy. And if you're bored, we'll be, when this is over with, don't complain about being busy. Because here's another thing. If you don't know how to control your time, somebody else will. Use this as an opportunity to be accountable for your time. Yes, sir. Come on, Bree. That was a brief tangent that I didn't yes, mean to go on right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You feel it, brother. You feel it. Like, he, he also criticized the blasphemy criminal for not seeing that the Lord's position is worse because he was innocent being up there in that situation. And he criticized the criminal for not seeing that he is the Lord. See, the blasphemer figured that he may be the Christ. The other criminal knew that he was and is the Christ. And that's the difference maker right now. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God? Not if he's the son of God. Some folks relationship with God is you are my Lord if. You are God if. If you make sure I live the most comfortable, sport, useless life possible of mediocrity, then you are my God. But the minute, the minute I have to go through any discomfort whatsoever, the minute I have to make any changes, the minute I am wrong, the minute stuff is not working right in my life, is the minute I quit. If you are God, why are people hungry in Africa? Why didn't you send money, American? There's enough people in America to solve that problem right now. You're talking to the wrong person. God gave you the position to even ask that question because the people in Africa right now are just too busy hurting to ask that type of question. Come on, Bree. Too busy hurting to ask that type of question. Take these opportunities not to blaspheme the Lord, but to do what is right. That's right. Yeah. And at the end of the day, he said this, and this is the unique opportunity that this guy had. Highlight the word, the unique opportunity that this criminal has had. He saw the pain that he brought upon himself. And moreover, he saw that, wow, I deserve to die a criminal. But look at what God did. He put me right next to the Savior. I heard of him, never met him before. Now, I hope some of y'all could meet Jesus in more comfortable circumstances. But it doesn't matter. Because if you have an opportunity to establish a relationship with Jesus, you are accountable to respond appropriately and establish that relationship with Jesus. And that's why when he looked at Jesus after he told that blasphemy criminal about himself, did he turn to Jesus? And that had to have been an interesting conversation because that meant that criminal was talking over Jesus at the guy. And then it said he turned to Jesus, which is some hard work when you got nails in your wrists. And then your feet, and you've been flogged, and you have wood cutting into your wounds. Yes, he looked over at Jesus and said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He didn't make anything specific because he knew he didn't deserve it. He didn't say, Lord, give me a spot in heaven. Give me a seat next to you. Lord, forgive my sins. He just said, whatever you do with me, right. I can't even really bargain with you right now. I just want you to remember me. Not if you go into kingdom, but when. Yes, and like this that. is why he's seeing Jesus die naked and bleeding on the cross, just like a criminal. 
he took the opportunity to stand up for God when no one else in the world would. The other passed on the last opportunity he will ever have in his life to be saved. We cannot escape adversity. In this life, we will have pain. And like again, like we, I'm gonna say it again because repetition is the father of learning. We cannot change the fact that we're gonna go through pain. We can only choose to grow from it. In painful situations, will you become soft and weak and fade away to oblivion? Will you choose to become hard and bitter and curse and blaspheme everybody, society, the government, your family, the Lord, the, your faith, the church, whomever? Or will you be the exception and grow into a new creature, one that God will remember when he enters into the kingdom and he says, come into the joy of the Lord. Again, there were two criminals, one on the right, one on the left. Both suffered pain, both criminals, yet one saw opportunity in the pain and the other one saw an opportunity to blaspheme. Which one are you? If you have not obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that is that he suffered and died so that he will have the opportunity to bring you back in a proper relationship with God, so that all we have to do is believe that he is, not made that he is the Christ, that he is the Lord. And if he is the Lord, which means master, which means boss for those who don't like the term master, then you do what the boss say. The boss says this. He told everybody who believes to be baptized in order to be saved. Mark 16, 16 says that he that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that does not believe shall be condemned. Now, somebody say, well, I'm still not thinking about doing it. That's why Luke 13 and 3 tells us that repentance is report important. Change that mind from an individual who's too busy, too hurt, too busy feeling sorry for themselves to take advantage of the opportunity. He's saying change from that mindset. Stop passing over the opportunity to have the Lord in your life today, right now. Mm -hmm. For those of y'all who think we will not baptize you, we will baptize you. Put a comment right there on the live stream. Somebody will get to you right now and we will find a way. The world is over 80% water surface wise, plenty of opportunity to baptize somebody into the body of Christ. So repent of that thinking, that poor thinking, and turn into an opportunity thinking. I'm going to take this opportunity to obey Jesus. I will confess Jesus as the Lord and I will, be, and I will behave in such a manner that says that I believe what he says. And the first step is baptism. The next step is living faithfully the Christian life and growing to be as strong mentally, emotionally, and spiritually as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I hope that this was an encouragement to you all. And I, again, I thank the leadership um, here at Edgewood Church of Christ for bringing me here. Thank you. Man. Song of invitation, leave it there. If the world from you withholds all of its silver and its gold, and you have to get along with me, girl, fair, and just remember in his word how he feeds the little birds. Take your bird to the Lord and leave it there, leave it there, leave it there, leave it there, leave it there. Leave it there. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there, there. If you trust and never die, He will surely bring you out. So take your bird to the Lord and leave it there. Course again. Leave it there, leave it there, leave it there, leave it there, leave it there. Leave it there. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never die, He will surely 
bring you out. So take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. Leave it there. Just like to appreciate um, Brother uh, Sam Knight uh, being a worker of the day and made a decision to uh, turn his life completely over to Christ Jesus to preach his word, uh, instant in season and out of season. Just give him another round of applause. Just appreciate his, uh, his tenacity for the cross. We just thank you for your spirit, my brother. Thank you for uh, growing up in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And appreciate Brother Wilkie for choosing uh, our brother to uh, come and and teach us a little bit more about working our way to the cross. Amen? Amen. If anyone is in pain today or anyone that uh, don't see the opportunity, but the Bible says now is the acceptable time for salvation, and that's all we have is now. It's not a, a, a constant uh, decision that we can make that knowing that later will come. The Bible talks about that uh, time is not, that tomorrow is not promised. So we want to have this opportunity to give our life to Christ because salvation is in Christ Jesus. And you can give us a call at 410-670-9696. Uh, 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 where somebody can uh, answer the phones and uh, be available to baptize you before it's everlastingly too late. And we just pray that if you can't get in touch with us, there are congregations all around uh, the state of Maryland and abroad, uh, that you can get in touch with somebody to uh to uh, have you obey the gospel, hear, believe, repent, and be baptized. Amen? Anyone that wants prayer for the pain at the end, we're going to pray uh, right now to thank God for our situations. Amen? Let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for allowing us to uh, realize that without pain there's no gain, uh, knowing that uh, when Jesus suffered on the cross, that pain uh, caused us to have an opportunity to not be in pain for the rest of our lives uh, spiritually, but to be able to be with him one day in glory. We just thank you for the opportunity that uh, has been given to us to be able to worship you in spirit and truth and having enough opportunity to give you all the praise and honor that you richly deserve. We just thank you for uh, this particular congregation, uh, Edgewood, and we thank you for uh, allowing uh, our brother to travel safely and make it down here to share another portion of your word, and we just appreciate uh, everything that has transpired this this morning and we just pray that you um, will continue to uh, wrap your uh, protection around us that we will be able to uh, uh, continue in this worship service and, and be able to continue to have you on our minds always and just uh, pray that uh, the things that was under the sound of our dear brother's voice that those things didn't fall on deaf ears and in Jesus Christ's name we pray amen The church say amen again. Amen. amen. Appreciate Brother Sam Knight for that message. Um, at this time, we will proceed to the communion portion of our worship service. Uh, we'll sing a short verse of a song before we uh, get our instructions on uh, the Lord's Supper. I really love the Lord. You know that I, I really love the Lord, and you don't know, you don't know what he's done for me. Yes, he gave me the victory, and that's why I love him. I love, you know that I, I really love the Lord. Amen. We are so grateful to God. This is the communion portion of our service. Uh, that was just a thank, to, uh, thank you to Brother Knight for bringing his message to us this morning, and it was very encouraging. Uh, after Christ came off the cross, he was buried in a tomb, and he rose on the third day. At, at, 
as it was prophesied in the scriptures. Uh, he told us before he uh, was crucified that he would do this. And he also said that he was going to give uh, instruction to the church on what to do to remember him for this great sacrifice. And what he told us was he wanted us to do this, which is communion, in remembrance of him every first, Sunday, every first day of the week. Uh, it was written all throughout the gospel. I will be uh, reading it from 1 Corinthians as he wrote this letter to the Corinthian church on what to do uh, regarding the Lord's Supper. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. After the same, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Let us pray. Lord God in heaven, we come to you with our heads bowed and our hearts humbled, uh, and our minds grateful for who you are. We are grateful that you are the son of the living God and that you live till this very day. We are thankful that you rose on the third day and you were resurrected with all power and victory in your hand to remove the sting from death. As this, as this time, as we come to celebrate that victory and to remember your sacrifice, we ask you to bless this bread, which is your body, which was torn on the cross for our sins. Bless it and bless the, bless the fruit of the vine, which is the representation of your blood that was shed. For we know that without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sins. We are so thankful for this sacrifice, and we are thankful that we are able to partake of this communion with you today. We ask you that we are able to do it in a manner that's pleasing and acceptable to you, yeah. having clean hands and a pure heart. Yeah. We thank you all, all the time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you could follow me in taking the bread as a family, we will first uh, pull back the, the plastic film on top and partake of the bread. Yeah. After you have partaken of the bread, you can pull back the aluminum layer and you can partake of the fruit of the vine. Oh, how sweet he is been. You know that he's, he's such a Lord, your friend. For me he bled and died, and he was crucified, and that's why I love him. I love, you know that I, I really love the Lord and you don't know you don't know what he's done for me yes he gave me the victory and that's why I love him I love you know that I I really love the Lord one more time and you don't know, 
you don't know what he's done for me. Yes, he gave me the victory. And that's why I love him. I love you know that I, I really love the Lord. Amen. That will conclude our communion portion of our service, and we will now move into our offering portion of our service. The Bible tells us that we ought to come together every first day of the week, and one of our uh, 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 things of worship should be to give back to God. This is told to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. Uh, as Brother Sam stated in his sermon, that we ought not miss the opportunity to give back to God through our pain and to bless him and to show our faith. And what more pain than a financial struggle that we're in due to this virus to show that we have our faith in God. So as we give back to God, let's keep in mind that this is an opportunity to show our faith and to show God that we trust him for everything that we need in this life. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 and 2 says, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. I will also read 2 Corinthians chapter number 6, uh, excuse me, chapter number 9, verses 6, 7, and 8. And this is speaking about the heart because God looks at our heart and all that we do. And this is the heart that we should have as we give back. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he hath purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Amen. So church, let us give back. Uh, you can go to the, uh, the uh, Facebook page, uh, the website, um, and you can go to uh, donate and press donate, and you can give um, in that way. Uh, I believe that you can mail in your donation possibly um, to the church. Uh, at 900 Trimble Road in Edgewood, Maryland, um, and we're going to give back here as we are assembled. Amen? Amen. Amen. More abundantly. Are you trusting Jesus all along the way? Does he grow more precious to your heart each day? Are you his disciples? Test his word and see. He will give his spirit more abundantly. More and more abundantly. More and more abundantly. That they might have life. And more abundantly, more and more abundantly, more abundantly, that they might have life and more abundantly. Let us pray. Faithful God in heaven, we come to you once again, uh, thanking you for all things. We thank you at this time for your provision. We thank you for being able to provide uh, even against the struggle that we are having in life today. We thank you for the uh, ability that you have, uh, the, the opportunity that you have given us every first day of the week to give back to you and show our faith. Uh, we thank you for putting it on our hearts to give back to you, and we thank you for allowing us to have the strength and the uh, intelligence of, of being able to provide for ourselves in whatever means that you have given us the ability to. We ask you to continue to bless our giving and continue to bless the sources in which we use to give back. We ask you to bless this congregation and its leadership as they uh, decide on what to do with the funds to broaden the border of your kingdom, be with their minds to be wise in what they do, that we may be able to uh, get the most uh, out of what uh, we have collected together for the purpose of spreading the gospel. Yeah. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and it's in his name we do humbly pray. Amen. 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 Appreciate everyone uh, tuning in. We have just been so blessed uh, by Minister Samuel Knight. 
Um, uh, his topic, Pain and Opportunity, the great job. And I'm just uh, so blessed to be in, to be able to hear that message. Had great responses online. And we just, I feel like, you know how the Olympics, Brother Knight, uh, this person that lights the torch, <laughs> right? You lit that thing with, with, with two torches, right? And so it's lit now. And so we are just grateful and just blessed. And Brother, I just appreciate you. He's going not only to bless his life, he's going to bless the congregation, the Church of Christ in the Northwest. He is going to bless the Mid-Atlantic area as he has blessed us. And uh, we want to pray for him and in his ministry. And as he continues to blossom and grow and as the Lord, uh, uh, his relationship with the Lord continues to grow, uh, we want to just pray that Sam, uh, Brother Knight, will uh, even come back and help us again. Uh, it, it, you know, we're going to ask him to come back again another time, and we just appreciate it, but we want to pray for his ministry and the congregation there as well. And so uh, uh, the next one up is our brother Chris Bradley. Next Sunday, he will bring the message, and uh, the torch is lit, so all he has to do is just continue to run the race, bro. Uh, so God has blessed us. We're going to, those who are here, we're going to stand, um, and we're going to have another song and then a prayer. Uh, continue to pray for the Nottingham family. Uh, my in-laws continue to pray for the Waller family, uh, those who have been affected by COVID-19, and just pray for the, all the churches of Christ as well. Let's continue to encourage one another as we are doing now. This is just a great time. Let's make use of the time, that, like Brother Knight said, that we have right now. Right. Amen. And let's praise them in our pain, and let's praise them in our circumstances. God bless you. Call him up and tell Jesus what the problem is. Call him up and he will in you in here. Just call him up and he will cast away your doubts and fears. So stop hesitating. Let us pray. Dear Lord, and I just want to thank you for blessing us to give us another day to worship you and praise you. Yes. And I thank you for protecting us throughout this time of quarantine. Yes. And I pray for the people that have been affected by the coronavirus yes. that they might recover. And we pray for the families that have lost loved ones. Amen. And I also pray for the congregation that we can save other people that are in time of distress yes. and financial and social and emotional and physical pain. Yes. And I pray that we can remember Brother Knight's lesson, pain and opportunity. Yes. Luke 23, 32 to 34. <coughs> in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.